Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of Photoshop CS4 Sneak Peek. Today, we're going to take a look at some of the new features inside of Photoshop CS4. Now, we're going to start with the user interface. When you launch CS4, it's going to look significantly different. Now, these differences are going to take a while for you to get used to, but I found after using them for a bit, it's much faster. Let's take a look at some of the cool new things inside of the latest version of Photoshop. Now, when you launch Photoshop, you're going to notice that there are no longer palettes. Everything has switched to what they call tab-based, and these are now actually panels. So things stay docked quite cleanly together, and as you change workspaces, window, workspace, you'll see that the different tools will come up for the particular task that you're working on. Now, you can access these workspaces from a handy menu here up in the upper right corner, and these allow you to switch. The first three here are really going to change how Photoshop presents its information. Essentials is the workspace that you will use most of the time, and this shows you everything in Photoshop and gives you the most commonly used panels by default. The basic workspace is very limited and actually hides several items from the menus. For example, when you choose the basic workspace, CMYK actually goes missing from the image modes. Now, you can always choose to see these items again, but basics is really just that for a basic user who's looking to simplify the Photoshop interface. The last option you see there is what's new in CS4. And when you choose this option, it'll actually change several items in the menu. You'll notice that things are actually color coded and everything that you see in blue is indicating that the feature is new or updated. So this is a great way to actually discover what's new in CS4. Now, I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the Essentials workspace, so we are using the default workspace. The other workspaces that are listed down below are for particular tasks. These don't actually modify the menus, but do change which panels you see. So for example, if I want to do color correction, I would just choose Color and Tone, and you'll see that certain panels become available. These new workspaces are really task-based, so if you're working in video, choose the video workspace. If you're going to be doing some proofing, choose proofing, and painting, etc. These are there to make it easier to call up just the tools you're going to need for a particular job. Now, as you're working with it, you'll discover some new things that have happened. Photoshop CS4 really takes advantage of OpenGL, so if you've got a powerful graphics card, you're going to see some cool things happening. One of those things is canvas rotation. Now, long-time users are used to, when they press the R key, that the blur tool is selected. Not anymore. You now get the rotation tool, which allows you to actually rotate your view. As I click here, you'll see that we can turn the canvas. And the little compass is indicating which way we're looking. Now, you might be saying, why would I turn the canvas? Well, this makes it a lot easier if you're using a tablet and you want to paint, or you're trying to really get in a particular area and you're finding yourself turning your wrist uncomfortably. The Rotate Canvas option is really just that, so you could turn the canvas and then hold your mouse in a normal way while working, and it's quite useful. But if you want to go back to a normal view, just go ahead and click the Reset View, and it will actually go ahead and square it back up. So, fairly straightforward. Zooming has also changed, so we can go ahead and select the Zoom tool, press Z for Zoom, and if we click, it continues to zoom in on the image. Now, one of the things you'll notice as you use the hand tool is that you could still drag around, but if we grab and drag, the pixels actually freely float, like we're tossing the image. This is very natural. When using tools like the hand tool and magnification, you can actually float the image and throw it around the canvas as you're working. This is nice, so instead of clicking and dragging repeatedly, you can just click, wind up, and throw it, and let it float into the place that you want. Simply click again and it'll actually stop, or over time, virtual gravity will do the job. This works quite nicely. Another thing you'll notice as you zoom in is once you go above 600%, you actually start to see a pixel grid, and you can see it quite well here. These lines don't print, but what they're useful for is as you're doing cloning or really trying to sample an exact color, this helps you to spot that color and really zone in on it. So, once the magnification level goes above 600%, you can actually go right in there and click this. Now, as you continue to zoom, you'll notice that you can actually zoom farther right now. 
In fact, Photoshop now supports a zoom level of up to 3,200%. You'll see right here we have the ability to change zoom level right inside the options bar as well. So, all in all, much easier to zoom and get around that image as you're navigating. Now, your panels here are very flexible. If you want, you can go ahead and tear things off and it'll come free, and then it's actually free floating. If you want to dock something back with it, just drag it on top until it turns blue and release, and you'll see that they dock together. Simply going back in and choosing a new preset for a workspace will rearrange your panels back to their default values. If you decide you want more room, you can go ahead and dock two items together, and notice the entire user interface adapts intelligently. This is really useful. Along this front, we can actually rearrange several windows. If you have a lot of documents open, you can start to join them together into tabs. Let's go ahead here and choose Window, and we'll select a particular document and switch to it. And you see we've got that. But if you've got several files open, it can get inconvenient. One quick way to switch is to just do Command tilde, and that'll switch you between open documents. That's nice, but you can also see all your documents at one time. If you go in up to the options bar here, you'll notice that we have a new button here called Arrange Documents. This does just that, lets you take multiple open documents and arrange them on screen. I can go ahead and click and actually choose different sorts of styles here. We have the ability to consolidate all, and if I choose that, it pulls them into one document here. Let's go ahead and press F and cycle our full screen modes. And you see right there that the documents are consolidated. If we want to, we can also say, let's go to a four up view. And it will actually arrange the windows into a four up arrangement. We'll go ahead and choose float all in windows. And it splits them into separate documents. We could then choose options like here, where we see four up. Notice that the documents intelligently rearrange. We see our first two documents here and then the others are nested together with tabs. If we want, we can go ahead and choose to consolidate these all into one window with Consolidate All, and you see that it quickly takes all open documents and puts them as tabs across the top. This is useful because you can cut down on clutter. Instead of having to switch back and forth between several windows, you could simply have one window visible and consolidate them all into a single document. Click the green or expand button there and it'll actually fill the whole screen. This makes it really easy to just work in Photoshop without having to worry about your desktop or other things down below. Now, one last thing that I like are spring-loaded keys. This works pretty well. Let's say you have the brush tool selected and you are starting to brush. And you say, oh, well, I'm in the middle of a brush, but I'd like to eyedropper. If I just hold the I key down, it switches to the eyedropper, and when I release, it actually switches right back to the brush tool. So that's a little bit of a change. In the past, you'd press the I key and switch to the tool, and then have to press B to switch back to the brush. But right now, we have spring-loaded keys. So let's say you were in the middle of making a selection with the marquee tool, and you decided that before you made that selection here, we've got a selection made, you wanted to do a little change, like rotate the canvas. No big deal. I could hold down the R key and choose to the rotate canvas command, and when I release, it goes right back to the marquee tool. So, all in all, much easier to get at what you need. So, that's it for this episode. I hope you learned some of the new things that you could do with Photoshop CS4. It's a very cool release with lots of great new features that really make it easier to get the job done. Go ahead and visit cs4.com. We could find out additional information, enter our contest, and find all of the episodes in one place. And if you enjoy our training, be sure to check out our regular series. We offer two free weekly podcasts all about Photoshop. The first is called Understanding Adobe Photoshop. It's designed for people who work in digital photography, graphic design, or just generalists who want to get more out of what Photoshop offers. For those of you who work in video and motion graphics, we offer another show called Photoshop for Video. And this show is all about using Photoshop to create content for professional video production. Thanks again for joining us. I'm Rich Harrington.